Welcome back, everybody. It's version 12 of the Photo Flux pack, and today I'm coming to you with animation stuff. So there should be videos playing on the screen. Um, one of them is Mimic Motion. That will be the Spider-Man dance. It's also got Reactor Face Swap, and also it's using my Detailer, which is a new video-to-video -video process that will just sharpen things up while we don't have Temporal Net. Now, if we get an animated diff, probably won't need it anymore, but for now, it's essentially an adapted version of my upscale workflow, but it doesn't upscale and it's been modified for uh, taking animation frames and it'll make, so it's video to video. So we're going to take a quick look at the four new workflows that have been added. Obviously we've got, um, before I forget, hit that bell. And where were we? Mimic Motion, which is the dance, and then we've got Live Portrait, which is this one over here. Uh, both of them are uh, massively improved. Now, can't really attribute it directly to Flux because, well, with exception of this one, because I did put it through a detailer pass, but um, the Mimic Motion and the Live Portrait run on their own architectures. They have their own models, but we are sending an image from Flux, like the bridge. So, without going on and on and on, Let's dive into the workflow. So first things first, this one is Foda Scene Creator, sorry, Editor. So Foda Scene Creator was generating every single layer, every single time. And so as we move towards more animation tools, what we're doing is we're introducing Foda Scene Editor. Now there's absolutely no difference between this one and the other one, except We've gotten rid of the entire generation stage for each layer, and now it just takes an image in. So we have an image loader, all right, which is then being sent through to all of the isolation and offset and scale. So we've still got the same thing, but this time you generate your images separately so you could work on backgrounds, work on subjects, work on foreground subjects, even work on lots of different texts. And then this way, you're not wasting as much time in here and you can focus on the composition by just bringing the image in and then determining where it's going to be. Uh, you still have the upscaling happening on each layer. So when you bring stuff in, it's going to normalize the sizes to your chosen aspect ratio. So it's got the same master controller that we've been using up to now. Also, uh, when you're debugging, it's the same thing activate everything up to where you're working and then it will just look at what you're looking at but you can have it all on it's not a big deal also we have a fast mode so when you have this on true it's not going to flux upscale the layers it's just going to do a cheap upscale which obviously is much much faster so when you're finished and you're happy all you have to do is take fast mode off and then it's going to send each layer to uh, flux upscale and then obviously you can tweak those parameters as well to get the desired effect. Now, I appreciate the one big bug with this system is that the lighting is bad, but don't worry, we're gonna be addressing that in the future. So I just sort of tried to step things up. So right now, I mean, obviously if you are aware of your lighting, then this is not a problem for you because it is possible to keep it under control in generations and then bring them in with matching lighting. Also, if your lighting is opposite, you can try flipping the image. It's a cheap trick, but it'll work. Okay, so that's everything for this one. There's no need for me to run it because you pretty much know what it is. It composites background, foreground, uh, background, subject, and then foreground subject, and then a bunch of text layers. So we've covered that in the past. So let's move on to the animation detailer. Now, this one's quite fun. So I think this tool is going to be really useful for lots of different things. It's video to video. So you add your video here. Oi, stop copywriting me. So you add your video there. And then what you do is you let it run. Ah, stop audioing me. So ah, I've got to reshoot this whole scene. And here we have Flux Animation Detailer. I sometimes call it Video Detailer because it's basically a video to video process. A couple of things to bear in mind. It does still use the aspect size controller. So you will want to approximate as best you can. I find preparing your source footage in one to one is always going to be the best way to do it. Um, obviously, if you want to do it, you can do whatever you want, but I just find that works best. 
Um, you don't want things clipping off the edge of the screen for what we're going to do later. But uh, if you're just finishing with this output, then it's not a problem. You've obviously got your seed control, which is going to be fixed. You've got your sub project so that it will save the uh, files into your project file there. I'll probably be doing a bit of a pass on this because I know some of it's a bit ropey. We've probably changed the paths a few times with a few of the projects now. So well, I'll make sure that's all done in the last version. Um, so we've got Flux Detailer, as I say. I've got to be careful not to mouse over the woman because she's got a copyright audio on her. <laughs> but basically what we're doing is we're taking the video in. We're making sure that the size matches the uh, aspect ratio. I don't know why it's on stretch. It should be on fill crop or keep proportion. Uh, we're using 1.5 boost. We, as I say, do the resize on fill crop. And then this is crucial. We send image batch to image list before we push it into the sampler. And then we also push image batch to image list for the color uh, color match. And then that way, it'll actually still be an animation, right? So then we push it through color match and image apply let. And then finally, we do image list back to image batch again so that the combine will actually make the video at the end. Now, if you look at this video, it has AI generated artifacts, but it's actually just a video that I've put through. Now, I hate to say this, guys, you got to watch out for this because I could just get some really cool video and bump up the, the, the shift and you're going to be like, wow. That looks like a really cool AI video, but the reality is it's actually just uh, video to video at low denoise. So, you know, you can see artifacts in there that would make you go, oh, this is AI. It's not. Anyway. Um, but basically the intention for this isn't to put video in it. It's to put your actual animation into it. So I'm putting this out as a separate thing because you might have old animations that you'd like to push through this. Okay. So put your old animation AI animations in here, hit the correct aspect ratio or approximate as best you can, and then let it run and uh, obviously play with the shift and the denoise. Now, I've currently used my upscaling prompt. Of course, you're welcome to use whatever transformative prompt you want to try out. Um, and that's pretty much it for this workflow. So there's actually a lot you can have fun with with this one because it's basically a flux animation remixer. Um, I call it a detailer because with the current settings, it's going to sharpen everything up compared to what was coming out of Mimic Motion. So that leads us into the Mimic Motion workflow. So let's take a quick look at that one. Okay, so here we are with the latest Mimic Motion. This was previously seen in my Loki pack, which is going to get a big update soon, but for now, what I'm doing is I'm just implementing a flux bridge to Mimic Motion. So what we've got here is we've got our LoRa CNET implementation. So we've got our LoRa, we've got our control net stack, and we've got the choice of image to image or text to image. Now I've used a photograph of the old Spider-Man, and then we've converted it into an AI version of the Spider-Man. Um, and then we've run it through with the video that I've been showing you so far today. So we run it through with that, which has given us our open pose. And then Mimic Motion uses SVDXT 1.1 to um, actually do the animation. So we've got uh, open pose running. Now the face and the detail isn't that great, as you can see. It's a bit shifty and blurry and stuff. Uh, and the face is sometimes terrible. I've actually tweaked the settings quite a bit uh, to try and get a better setting. Uh, uh, but anyway, I messed around with that quite a long time. Anyway, what we do is we do our reactor face swap. Now, I'm going to be using my Johnson face model here, right? So that's why that's photographic. Obviously, you can build your own model or you can just put an image into here. Okay. That will also work just fine. Just disconnect the face model if you don't want to use that. But it is much, much faster to use a model when animating because you're not actually doing the calculation every frame. You're just using the shorthand. And then when you're doing lots and lots and lots of frames like this, it, it's more consistent and much, much faster. I think it's like 10 times faster. Uh, you will find the create face model in a couple of my workflows. If you go into the Loki pack, there's a dedicated uh, there's a dedicated uh, workflow which contains it. Uh, maybe we'll add it if people request it, but, you know, there it is. I know sometimes people want to use different things. 
one of the big things about this particular one is it's actually doing some masking. So we're actually using the masking helper. So for example, if the hand goes in front of the face, it's actually going to render the hand going in front of the face. Can you actually see it happening there? Sort of. It's not the best example of it, to be honest. And then finally, we hit up the uh, detailer. And if we take a look at what the detailer's done here, you can see that it has sharpened it up quite a, quite a bit. And we haven't made it bigger. It's still small. So obviously, you still can do video upscaling passes um, subsequent to this. But that will all come in another pack, I'm sure. So here we go. That would be our Flux CNET to Mimic Motion. All right. So we got one last workflow to go, and that will be the live portrait update. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we have CNET live portrait. So my Flux Laura CNET is the base, which I've modified this from. And then I've put my new um, live portrait implementation down here. So we've got Jack Nicholson and a few good men over there. And then we've got the president, which I generated a while back um, using image to image. Or No, actually, wait, that was reverse in paint. So I in-painted in over someone's face. And if you remember the video, you know who. So yeah, what we've done there is we've generated a new American person, American politician guy, and then we've given him the voice and the expression from A Few Good Men, which is the famous speech where he's like, you can't handle the truth. It's the same, it's the same movie. Um, so what we've done there is we've basically had that and the demo, you'll be able to see the demo on the main page just here. Now, the Spider-Man has been flagged for uh, not safe for work, so I've, I've asked them nicely if they can review it for me. So that might pop up. That might pop up at some point. Um, a quick note about this. If you see his face, like, vibrating and stuff, it's actually because the video driver had long hair. The girl had really long hair, and so it was obscured, and it couldn't tell where the face was anymore, and so it starts, like, blah, 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 vibrating <laughs> violently. Um, but you can see the obscuring there where he had the arms are coming in front every now and then. Um, and you can see that's what that masking help is doing. So you can actually put hands in front of face like that and it does work. But unfortunately, she was covering her face with her hair quite a lot. And so that messed that one up. Also, with this particular demo for the live portrait, and that's why I've come back to here, this video was made without the expression activated. So this is good but you will actually get better results because I did my testing with that off. And when you put that on, it actually does improve it quite a bit. So, but like I said, this is going to be really good for creating characters. I can't wait to start making some and then rotoscoping them out. And then we'll start placing them into scenes. So everything's sort of, it's all starting to come back together. So, um, Thanks, everybody, for being so active and uh, enthusiastic on all of the posts and everything. It's really helped out with getting this to more people. All right, so that's it. Four new workflows. Flux to Mimic Motion, Flux to Live Portrait, the Image Loading Scene Editor, and Flux Animation Detailer, which is a video-to-video, no-upscale Flux processor. So there it is. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to join in on the Discord, and I'll see you next time. So, memberships are here. I've added Donator and Member. The Donator membership is just uh, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. And uh, check out the Join Now button for more information.